Welcome to Ponderosa North for the love of Bonanza. Today I'm just going to highlight some of the great lines of the show. There were so many of them. Um, Bonanza was fortunate enough to have really amazing writers, the best in the business at the time. There are uh, over a hundred writers uh, over the entire series. Uh, most notably John Hawkins, he wrote dozens of episodes. Susan Klosser, Preston Wood, Frank Chase, Frank Cleaver, uh, David Dortort, of course, and Alex Sharp. Uh, Pernell Roberts said, yes, get Alex Sharp. He gives me something to do. <laughs> uh, he wrote, uh, Alex did, uh, two of the most popular episodes, Ponderosa Matador and Hey Burner. So, and I always wondered about ad-libs in the show. I don't think there was a whole lot of ad-libbing. I think they really stuck stuck to the script. Um, that, uh, David Dortort said there was a lot of revisions to the script. I'm not sure if there was a lot of input uh, from the actors, but I don't think ad-libbing was one of those things then. But let's get started with a couple of my favorite lines, and this is just a small sampling of, um, you know, lines in the show. There were hundreds of great lines, but these are just a few. Like Joe saying, I got shot. Where? Right in the middle of the Ponderosa. <laughs> Ouch. That must have hurt. Haas had some great lines. He says, you ain't going to shoot her, are you? You ain't even married yet. <laughs> He's drunker than a fly in the corn squeezins. <laughs> he said this many times. Not horse, just plain hoss. H-O-S-S. -S. He had to have said that about 20 times in the, in the show. We'd be as welcome as two wet dogs at a parlor social. <laughs> oh, we'll move on to cattle drives. Um... Apparently, little Joe had issues with cattle drives. He, there's many comments he's made that he's not really happy about doing his business. That's their business, cattle. But he said, he said, well, there are worse things than a 15-day cattle drive, you know. Oh yeah, what's that? A 16-day cattle drive. He says it got so hot on that trail. I thought we were going to bring the. <laughs> Sorry, I always think this is so funny. It got so hot on that trail, I thought we were going to bring the cattle here already barbecued. <laughs> That's hot. <laughs> Dusty, I got enough dirt in my mouth to plant corn in. He was not really thrilled with cattle drives. That's for sure. Um, just moving on to a couple of random lines here. Um, in Ponderosa Birdman, where Haas decides he's going to fly... Adam sarcastically, oh, imagine him being our sarcastic. Imagine trying to climb a tree without a lariat. <laughs> Whatever that means. Ben says, hasn't anyone ever told your brother there are more ways to ride a horse than at a dead run? I wonder who he's talking about there. In Haas and the Leprechauns, Haas is seeing Little Green Man. And uh, Ben says, well, you better go tell the sheriff. <laughs> and Adam and Little Joe are like, no, no, you're not going to let him tell that story in town. They're going to think he's loony. Yeah, I, a little town and what people thought was very important. <laughs> Don't be doing that. Um, let's go on to uh, Haas's appetite, which was a, um, a recurring theme throughout the series. Uh, when in the flapjack eating contest, when Joe insists that Haas walk home from town to build up his appetite... Ben says, build up his appetite. He eats more than all of us put together already. What do you mean put up a, build up his appetite? <laughs> In the rescue, he tells Ben tells Hop Singh, I'll tell Haas we're having turkey for dinner, but what are the rest of us going to eat? <laughs> he says, I'm so hungry I'm dangerous. I'm so hungry I could eat a pack mule. I'm so hungry I could eat fried bear fat. That's pretty darn hungry, Haas. Pretty darn hungry. And The Frenchman, which is one of my favorite episodes. Haas has been challenged to a duel. So Adam and Little Joe are going to teach him how to use swords. <laughs> and Adam says, no, no, you've got you to gotta turn to the side, Haas. You're, you're too big a target that way. And Haas says, I'm too big of a target anyway you look at it. <laughs> so true. Oh, and, Han and Ponderosa Explosion... Little Joe and Haas are going to breed rabbits as if they need any help. Um, so they're waiting around for uh, their doe to finally give birth. And Little Joe says, you know what they say, you can't make water by watching it. <laughs> no, that's not what they say. 
They say a watch pot never boils. You can't boil water by watching it. So when finally the doe gives birth over and over and over and over and over again, Haas says, I ain't never seen anything double or triple or quadruple or whatever comes after that like these little hoppers have. <laughs> I think quintuple comes after quadruple. Ben says, I can't believe that two reasonably intelligent young men can leave home for a couple of weeks and come back home with an elephant. <laughs> Here she is. <gasps> Old Sheba. A great episode. A wonderful episode. So many great lines. And awesome little Joe bring her home and try and hide her in the barn. And when Adam finally lays eyes on her, he says, well, you got to admit, there is a whole lot of livestock there. <laughs> there sure is. She was a sweet old gal, old Sheba. What else have we got here? Uh, in A Night to Remember, Adam is seeing things. He's actually seeing King Arthur. And uh, when little Joe and Haas come home and tell their father, Ben replies, well, I can understand that you might see things, and I can understand that you might see things, but I can't understand that Adam sees things, not him. And little Joe and Haas were just so <laughs> insulted by what he just heard. In Hayburner, um, Haas has just lost a racehorse that they he and Adam had just purchased, and he lost the horse in a poker game, and Adam finds out and says, you know, if you weren't so big, I'd poke you right in the mouth. <laughs> and then they bring her home, finally, and um, after they get security, got to remember that, um, they bring her home and they try and hide her in the barn again, and uh, Ben finds out and he comes in and he says, well, he's taller than anything we have on the ranch. Do you intend to drive cattle or do some roping with this giraffe? Uh, little Joe on the draw. Little Joe he was a quick draw and was left-handed. I think that made him more, more deadly, more accurate. But when he drew on somebody and beat him by a mile, Joe said, you would have died from a real bad case of slow. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, as we all know, women on the Ponderosa were few and far between. We all know about the Cartwright curse. Uh, women were doomed when they went onto the ranch. Um, and Haas says, in a pink cloud comes to old Callie, he says, she? How many she's we got around here? Her! <laughs> in the wooing of Abigail Jones, Haas uh, displays his, uh, his vocal prowess, shall we say, and, and lets out quite a bellow, uh, much to Little Joe's chagrin. And Little Joe says, you know, Haas, we're trying to serenade the girl, not warn her of a coming attack. Uh, Haas says, it's like a toothache and a headache. They both ache in the same place, but there's a difference. <laughs> That's true. Um, the lighter side, um, uh, Adam says, well, maybe we could have a coffee milk tea party. Let's face it, the sweetest, most genuine relationship in the whole series was between Adam and Laura Dayton's daughter, Peggy! There she is. They were so cute together. Look at these two. Are you kidding me? Peggy wasn't very happy with Adam at the beginning, but she really grew to love him. And when he showed up with that pony, I was so jealous. That beautiful pony. Then they became absolutely best friends. And I think Adam was more uh, interested in becoming Peggy's father than Laura Dayton's wife. It's the old Jerry Maguire effect. Um, so that's a few of the, f the cute lines and the funny lines, but there are lots of poignant ones too. Many, many. Uh, and this is just three that I've picked out. Adam says in the jackknife, he says, any man can shoot a gun, but it takes a big man not to shoot one. Hmm. Um, in the civil, in the uh, oh, House Divided, there are many arguments uh, about the Civil War. Little Joe thought he was a Southerner or felt he was a Southerner because his mother was born in New Orleans and Little Joe and uh, Adam was born in the North. He was born in uh, New England so he was always on the North side and there was always this conflict and there are many references to the Civil War. It, uh, the series took place uh, during the Civil War um, and Adam there's a there's an argument again and Adam threatens to leave and as he's leaving Ben runs out after him and he says, I'm not going to stand by and watch my family flick away like rust off a wheel. 
It's very good. Uh, but I think my favorite uh, poignant line of the entire series is in Vengeance. Um, Haas has been shot, and um, Little Joe is just beside himself with fury and revenge. And he's pacing the floor. He was not one to <laughs> keep his feelings inside. Everything was out on the table with Little Joe. Um, and Ben just stops him and he says, Look, at, you're not the only one who's worried. We're all of us. A, all of us are worried. He says, there are right ways and wrong ways to everything, even to worrying. I just love that. There are right ways and wrong ways to everything, even to worrying. Great, great line. I'm just going to leave you with one, one line from Adam. Um, it sort of uh, encapsulates his character, my favorite character, if you have a different no already. But in The Ride, my favorite episode, he says, I'm not wrong. Was he ever? <laughs> well, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me. Uh, let me know any of your favorite lines. I'd love to hear them. Put them in the comments below. And we will see you next time on Ponderosa North for the love of Bonanza. Enjoy your springtime. Bye.